What is happening, Adventure Nation? As I was uploading this footage, I realized that I hadn't done a proper opening, and I can't let that happen, so here it is. This is the Motorhome Experiment. I hope everyone is doing well. It's good to see your smiling faces. Of course, can't really see your smiling faces, but I assume you're out there. In this video, we head out of Louisville and we're heading south towards the Nashville area. We are gonna make a couple of stops along the way, but climb on into the cab with us and let's get this thing started. Good morning. We are rolling out of the Louisville North Campground or North Louisville Campground, it's one of the two, something like that. <laughs> and it was super convenient to visiting Louisville, Kentucky. As you'll see if you look at any of the ratings, people are all across the board on it. And I would say that of the uh, on a five-star rating, it a three is about right, two and a half to three. It is not a pretty campground. It is really, really tight. There is a train running right beside the campground which runs all night. Last night I was editing at, I don't know, 1.30 or two o'clock in the morning and a train went by. I mean, just thundering by. But Lori didn't hear it, so. Yeah, but it doesn't honk the horn, so you can just hear it passing, but you cannot loudly hear it, right. really. But it's super tight, but I will say this. Sometimes it's about convenience. Uh, this one, super convenient to where we wanted to go, which was Louisville, and the people are, super nice inside. I don't know if they were the owners, I don't know if they were just managers, but everyone we met from, and the only name I remember is Courtney, the young girl that met us when we first got, amazing. They were all super, super nice and very accommodating. So not a perfect campground when it comes to, to space and being beautiful and all that. It's a city campground and it worked for us. So if you're looking for like a quick overnight or a few days, it's gonna work. You're not gonna set up here and do campfires. Uh, it's not that kind of campground. There aren't any spaces for campfires because there's you can't get between your camper and the next camper. But Louisville turned out to be amazing and we never got to do a large majority of what people were suggesting. Of course, people were suggesting things that were 80 miles away. So that's, that's a little bit too far if we're staying somewhere to, to venture off that far away. But the stuff that they had mentioned in town, the lantern thing was, was crazy cool. Something we've never seen before. I thought it was amazing. And I didn't want to go. <laughs> I was fighting Laurie to go. And of course the sun come out today and it's gonna be warming up. So we're gonna leave. Ah, typical. But we're gonna leave and go have some fun down south of here. We're heading towards Nashville, but we are gonna wind up at a pretty cool place, I think. But today's just a quick travel day. There's not gonna be much going on. And we're just gonna head south out of here. We're rolling down the road to Mammoth Caves National Park right now. And we're actually gonna meet some friends from London, Ontario that we met there, Steve and Diana, but Steve and Diana, I have to apologize. My ADD got to me. We're driving by Jim Beam's distillery and Lori's afraid that we'll never be invited back to Kentucky again if we don't stop at least one distillery. So, Jim Beam it is. Yeah. We almost got away from Kentucky without stopping at the distillery. That will have been a crime.
So yeah, we were afraid that if we came to Kentucky and left without going to one distillery that we wouldn't be allowed back. So <laughs> we decided to come here and this place looks pretty cool. And I'm sure that it's a name that all of you guys know. Some of you guys know personally. And here is some pricing on the tours, so you guys can check that out. We are gonna do the full distillery tour and check this place out a little bit. And that's our call to go on the tour. We've got a couple of tickets for the tour. The gift shop is amazing. It's two stories of really cool stuff, especially if you're into the whole Jim Beam and whiskey thing. Pretty cool. This is gonna be our chariot. So that first area we were in is called craft brewing. They had three firmer, fermenters at 500 gallons a piece. This is, I don't know how many, but it's a lot and it's a lot bigger process. Check this out. Oh, I don't realize how far up off the floor we are. Holy smokes.
<laughs> What's your name? Sharon. Sharon Beam and Troy Beam. All right. We're going to roll the barrel over and I'm going to catch. We're probably going to spill. We always do, but we're not wasting. This is actual production, ladies and gentlemen. There's a very fine screen down here that catches the char, allowing the bourbon to go through where it's held in a tank underneath. All right. So get those cameras ready and fill me up. There we go. Very good. Very good. So when we filled it on the other side, it was clear. It looked like water. Nine years in the barrel, ladies and gentlemen, every bit of this color came from the wood, along with 70% of the aroma and the taste. I thought it actually smelled okay. I'm so great, Dad. Uh, the big bottles down there, four and a half liters and three and a half liters, that is a um, overseas product. You cannot buy a bottle that big here in the U.S. G-Line. G-Line does nothing but 1.75 handles. Never changes. Always do it. 1.75. So normally this line here does between 9 and 12,000 cases a day. Of course today it's broke and they've only got 1,400 done. Typical for us, right? Why, Lori? Why is stuff always broke when we visit? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is just awesome. And these poor people on the tour with us didn't know that we were coming with them. They shouldn't have came on a tour with us. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, we have, this is known as T. Jeremiah's room. T. Jeremiah was Jimmy's son, our first world ambassador, taking us global. So look at the floor. Places and dates everywhere. And this is our packaging and distribution in shorthand. Every time you see a place and a date, it's when beef products were available in that area or country. The decanters. Beans started making decanters in 1953. We made uh, at that time, bourbon was not doing very well. Then in 2012, we got back into decanters, and since then we've launched three. They're there in the showcase in the front. So enjoy the decanters, folks. Together we have a total of 74. Beam currently ages right in the neighborhood of 1.9 million barrels. Watch your steps, ladies and gentlemen. So as you come in first, you might notice it's a little cooler in here. It feels a little cooler. It is always about 10 to 15 degrees cooler on the first floor of this warehouse than it is outside, and that is year round. Uh, so warehousing is done the old fashioned way. It's done by men and women with big strong backs. The elevator then takes it to the correct level. This is nine stories high. Once that barrel hits the correct level, it is rolled again by hand to a rick. Three barrels high, 14 back is called a rick. 
So you'll notice as time goes on, we get that beautiful amber color. We witness that, all right, with the Knob Creek single barrel. You'll notice that the percentages go down. The angels are definitely taking their share. And finally, the bottle count. That's how many 750 milliliter bottles we will get per barrel. This is what nine stories of bourbon looks like. <laughs> Holy smokes. So ladies and gentlemen, is there anything on the tour that I have not discussed that you were interested in? Any questions that you've thought of? Do you turn the barrels? We do not. I don't know what Mila Kunis has to do with this, but this young lady up here says Mila Kunis did this, and Mila Kunis is kind of hot. It's a she's did a commercial. Oh, did she do and a commercial? She's talking about the um, angel share. Yes. Ah, okay. As you guys know, I'm not a drinker. I don't drink alcohol at all, so Lori's gonna get to taste more than everybody. She gets to do six drinks rather than just three. I will sacrifice myself. <laughs> Total <Yeah>. sacrifice. <laughs> now, I'm not the bourbon or whiskey drinker, so for me it's gonna be actually tough. This should be interesting, yeah. All right, so you gotta put your card in. Wait for the click. Didn't seem to Going click. For service. Okay, no, uh, the gold thing down. Put your card in, wait for the click, move it around a little bit. What you do? There. there you go. Click. Okay, click. You're gonna try the black label. There you go. Alright. So I'll pull your card up. They said black is the Is there it was one of their premiums. Premiums, but it's not double shelf. Should I put some water in it? No, you should just try it straight. It's not that hard. It's not that horrible. Still not. This one is not for me. No. Maybe try some water with it. Hmm? Maybe try some water with it. Okay, now it's the uh, the double double oak. That that seems interesting because this one is twice barrel. All right. Any water? You going straight up? You don't have to carry me to the car. <laughs> I understand that. Oh, that one is smooth. Yeah. It doesn't have that burn. <laughs> so that one is smooth. Okay. So now the Knob Creek single barrel. Okay. This is a nine year old. This is the one we smell from the barrel. Yeah. And even I like the smell of that. Yeah, that's, that's, that one's pretty decent, although it smells like paint thinner. Exactly. <laughs> has more flavor to it. Right. Still a little bit on the throat, but it has more flavor to it. Well, the Jim Beam distillery tour was very, very cool. The tasting was good for somebody who's a little bit like, tipsy right now. I have to double the tasting, so <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> and now we're going to head down the road and uh, see what other trouble we can get into. By the I, way, when you did the tour, you have like your souvenir shot glasses. Yep. Cool. How you doing, sir? Hunter, just find, go up and see what's going on your right, find you somewhere. Okay. Come back down and do the sales registration. Fantastic. Thank you so much, sir.
We arrived here in Mammoth Cave National Park after coming down from Louisville, Kentucky. We made a quick stop at the Jim Beam Distillery because we didn't want to leave Kentucky without <laughs> hitting a distillery, and we thought that was our last stop. We actually could have made, uh, what's the one down there in, uh, in Bardstown? Maker's Mark. That was one of the other ones that Lori wanted to see, but it was a little ways off the highway. Jim Beam was really, really handy. And so we just popped off there, but uh, this is where we're going to call this one, gang. So if it's your first time here, it'd be awesome if you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date on all of our travels, and it would be equally as cool if you liked the video. And we'll see you again next time. Bye, guys. Bye. And he says bye, too. What's up, dude? You want to say bye? Say goodbye, Jesse. <laughs> no? You like yourself on camera? Like, bye. Bye. Yeah, he's not paying what is going on Adventure Nation? As I was uploading this footage, I realized that I hadn't done a proper opening and I couldn't let that happening, so oh, and I couldn't let that happening. Lovely grammar. What is happening Adventure Nation? As I was uploading this footage, I realized I hadn't done a proper opening and I didn't want to let that happening. Holy crap, two times in a row. It's because Lorena is sitting across the room from me and she's distracting me. What is happening, Adventure Nation? As I was knocking on the table and making the camera move around. Oh, this could take a while, folks. <sighs> take 25. In this video, we're going to be looving Louvi the Louisville area. <laughs> it's just one of those days where I can't talk. In this video, we're gonna be looving, Louv holy crap. <laughs> we're trying to talk too fast. Leaving the video. <sighs> I help all, I help all of you guys? What the heck is happening to me today? I might have to come back and do this opening tomorrow. <laughs>